Hello again. Welcome subscribers and students to a new video. In this video, we're going to see a little bit more about what we studied previously. Do you remember that we last time talked about sentence fragments, the types of sentence fragments that we recognize, and the correction methods that are not difficult, but probably that are still giving us a little bit of trouble. So we're going to read up a little about that. And we're going to continue with two more topics that are pretty simple, easier than fragments, I promise, and the correction methods to avoid these two problems that we're going to study today, which are common slices and random sentences. Are you ready to start? Let's begin. To start, I first want you to think a little bit about the previous topic that we studied. Do you remember which one it was? Probably yes. It's been a long time since we have been having these videos. So the previous videos we had were sentence fragments and we studied six types of them. And now we're going to, as I told you before, see a little bit about comma slices and run-on sentences. These are the topics for today. So let's get started. As a review of sentence fragments, we can say that a sentence fragment can easily trick a writer and then a reader. Why? Because we sometimes tend to confuse incorrect ideas that are supposedly transmitting one whole idea or sentence or thought, meaning that they are a sentence when they lack probably the capital letter, the period at the, at the end, or they, they do not make sense by themselves. Sometimes they do not make sense by themselves because they can be any of these seven mistakes that you find here. The first one is a subordinate close fragment. Having a marker that will represent a subordinating clause sometimes at the beginning, and that can be easily put into work if you place it next to an independent clause. The second one is the infinitive phrase fragment. Infinitive phrase fragments, as the name implies, have an infinity, and all the constituents that are the pre modifiers and post modifiers of them. How do you fix them? You attach them to an independent clause, or you make this infinitive phrase be one of the noun phrases that you use as a noun equivalent. Then you have the appositive fragments. Appositives are telling us a little bit more about a noun. So we're going to use them in either position a noun can be, but you have to remember that by themselves they will never constitute a sentence. Then we have part, the participle phrase fragments. They can be present participles, past participle phrase fragments, and they will definitely change a noun because they have an adjective function. That's why participle phrase fragments. All right, so how do we fix them? We fix them by adding them into an independent clause, changing something in the sentence that is a noun because they have an adjective function. The lonely verb fragment is this type of fragment in which the writer has forgotten how to use the subject and the predicate in a sentence. So the resulting problem is a nonlinear fragment. It's just a piece of something that lacks a subject, a clear cut subject to be attached to it. So we need to give it a subject. Then we have the afterthought fragments. Afterthought fragments can sometimes come when we use expressions such as that one, such as, for example, for instance, for example, including, excluding, where you're going to list probably an idea, I mean a clause, or probably phrases, or noun phrases, one after the other one. We have already studied some examples. If you're still doubtful about them, you can go to the previous videos where I have explained sentence fragments part one and sentence fragments part two. And one of the last uh, absolute phrases, this one is a typical fragment that through research, as I was telling my students in one of my classes, I have discovered and I find very easy and very useful to explain. Why? Because these absolute phrases sometimes come in the form of a clause or a phrase, and they sometimes are defined as participle phrase fragments, but they behave differently. Why? Because absolute phrases will modify my whole clause. So you have to be very careful not to confuse them. Absolute phrases sometimes can be at the beginning of a sentence, but if you punctuate them incorrectly and you divide them by a period or a semicolon, you have a fragment. Remember, Fragments do not have all the necessary elements. They do not meet all the requirements to be a sentence. Which ones are some of the revision methods we have already studied for sentence fragments? Well, 
Remember that some of them need to be attached to an independent clause for them to work as a sentence. And some others sometimes need to delete one element, and then you will have one simple sentence. For example, the subordinate clause present. If you delete the subordinate uh, conjunction, then you will have a subject and a friend. Those fragments that are clauses and they could, that, that are found in a clause form, since they have probably a subject and a predicate, deleting one element will fix the problem. But when they need to be attached to an independent clause, you have to make both parts make sense by themselves. And if it makes sense, it's capitalized at the beginning, ends with a period, and it is totally complete. If, if it is thought of in meaning, then you have a sense. So that was about fragments, a topic we have already studied. Now, for today's video, this is the core. This is the essence. We want to study comma slices. But what are comma slices? You have, you have had a video where I have explained a little bit about that. But now I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on it myself. So let's start it. Comma slices. What are comma slices? They incorrectly connect independent clauses. A comma slice occurs when two independent clauses are connected with only one comma. For example, my family bakes together nearly every night. We then get to enjoy everything we make together. What is the problem in this sentence? What is wrong? I have a subject, I have a verb. The meaning of the sentence is complete. I have started with a capital letter and I'm ending with a period. So what's the problem then? Well, remember, you cannot make Pause them and divide ideas using only commas. Why not? I want to give you the reason a little bit later. That is the comma slice, but what are the correction methods that we can use to avoid this common mistake? Well, one of these correction methods is that we can break a sentence into two separate sentences. How? By using the correct punctuation marks. You can add, for example, a period or use a semicolon, and they both may work well. How are you going to break a sentence? Well, you first have to identify and make sure that they are, the way you are dividing the sentences is representing one idea and then another, right? So you will end one idea with a period or with a semicolon, and then you will begin a new one. Another correction method that is also suggested for comma slices is to build a compound sentence. How are you going to do that? You will add a coordinating conjunction and a comma in between the independent clause. Remember that fanboys or coordinating conjunctions will meet the function of coordinating two elements that are of the same grammatical type, which means you're going to have an independent clause and another independent clause and the bridge that will connect these two independent clauses that are the same grammatical rank and that convey similar ideas is a coordinating conjunction. But before a coordinating conjunction, never forget that you need to add a comma. That little clause is permitted only when you have this coordinating conjunction in between. Then you have a third correction method is coordinating one of the clauses properly. Why property? And I emphasize that because sometimes we need to subordinate one of the clauses, but if we subordinate the incorrect clause, then we're going to com commit another mistake. And then the new mistake is going to be called faulty subordination. So you have to be very careful with that. Do not forget the punctuation rules that apply if you want to subordinate one of the clauses. If my subordinate clause is at the beginning, then you need a comma, and then you continue with an independent clause. If it is the other way around, and you start with an independent clause, then you have the subordinating conjunction, and the other clause, then because you are subordinating the second clause, you don't need any comma, okay? If you're still doubtful, you can check the previous video where I explained these punctuation rules as well. Okay, so now, a comma slice, sorry, a comma slice, occurs when you use a comma to join two complete sentences without placing an appropriate joining word between them. Why appropriate? Because a comma is not strong enough to do the job of making one grammatical sentence out of two. Don't forget that, please. Sometimes we make this mistake because we think that adding a comma between ideas separates ideas correctly 
But hey, listen again. Listen to this idea again. A comma alone is too weak to separate two complete ideas, whether they are short ideas or long ideas. The comma just isn't strong enough to do the job of making one grammatical sentence out of two. Learn to recognize what a comma slice looks like. And be sure to avoid them in your writing. Why? They are not as serious as sentence fragments that cut up the meaning of the sentence because they lack logic. However, if you have comma slices, your writing will look unfocused and it will look amateur and it will look inappropriate and it will look non-standard. So we want academic writing, so we have to be very careful and we need to be sure that the conventions that apply to a composition are followed and that the requirements for a correct sentence are met. So important to remember, comma slices are not serious mistakes, but they are mistakes. And the best way to avoid these errors is to punctuate sentences correctly and respect the original idea as much as possible. How? Remember that in classes, I give you different ways to correct one thing, but it is true that we have different methods and I have presented at least three of them and there are more. There may be more depending on the context where you are fixing the problems that you find in someone's writing. But what happens when we are the ones who make the mistakes and then we want to write them. We want to respect our own ideas. So when we fix another mistake that somebody else gives us, in this case, the instructor, the class teacher, the class director, the coach is telling you, okay, so you need to change this, but you need to respect the writer's original idea. So you have to find a way in which ideas are related and are run smoothly so that you do not change the meaning of the sentence, okay? That's why I remind you, the best way to avoid such errors is to punctuate sentences correctly and to respect the original idea as much as possible, to keep it as the writer in library. Now, we have talked about comma slices, and the second thing we want to talk about is random sentences. But before we go to the next topic, I want to remind you of some basic definitions. Why basic? Because these things come to be that, very basic. And when we make one, we make basic mistakes. So we need to review an independent clause uh, concept. What is an independent clause? It is a clause that can stand by itself. If it's independent, it means that it doesn't need anything else to work. This independent clause will have at least a subject and a predicate. Subordinating conjunctions can, as the name implies, subordinate one clause. So when you have subordinating conjunctions, you will have probably fragments. So it's very important that you understand that subordinating means that this one has to be subjected to another clause, to an independent clause, okay? And then we have coordinating conjunctions and conjunctions. Conjunctions are words that join two elements. For example, I can say Peter and Laura. When I say Peter and Laura, I mean there are two people, right? That could be a compound subject for a sentence. So Peter and Laura are my best friends. And that conjunction is not a coordinating conjunction. It is only joining two elements of the same brand. Two nouns, so I said Peter and Laura, two proper nouns. And we have coordinating conjunctions on the other hand. Coordinating conjunctions coordinate as the name says. And you're going to coordinate two elements of the same brand. Here we are coordinating two independent clauses, two clauses that can stand by themselves and if we use them together in a sentence and we place a comma between these two independent clauses and a coordinating conjunction in the middle, we're making a compound sentence. That was just a reminder because I, I, I know that you already know this concept, but this is just not to, oops, forget that, and sometimes make mistakes because of not knowing or probably not remembering quite well these very basic concepts that are very useful when we write com complete sentences that we want to imply, that we want to use, and that we want them to be clear, but they are not clear because we forget little things like this. Now, landing into the second topic, run-on sentences. Sorry, there's a typo here. 
Some writers will call it theocentrism as well. These few sentences or these um, run-on sentences, they are sentences as the common slices that are born when the writer is careless about punctuation again. It has at least two parts, either one of which can stand by itself, in other words, two independent clauses, but the two parts have been smooshed together instead of being properly connected. The length of a sentence really has nothing to do with whether a sentence is a wrong one or not. There may be very short sentences that are joined together, having no period, no comma, no semicolon, no transitional words or anything. And the writer thinks that because ideas are connected, they can be separated just with a sign. But we need to have some punctuation marks that will probably change the meaning of the sentence or that will give the reader a pause. That's a little bit about the correction method for run-on sentences or fused sentences. Uh, I have divided this slide as why and how, because the why are the reasons why we sometimes make this mistake, and the how are the correction methods that I'm suggesting in order for you to learn how to correct them. There's an example below where you have the mistake right here, and then you have the other one on the right where I have tried to fix it and where I'm explaining the correction method I use. So the first reason to be to have a random sentence, it could be that the writer sometimes tries to write a sentence, but when it comes to write a sentence correctly, an independent clause gives an order or directive base on what was said in the prior independent clause. How is that? For example, look at this example you have here. This month's chapter has a lot of difficult information in it. You should start studying right away. What happens in this sentence? Well, we have mixed two ideas into just one string, and we made no pause, and we have two different ideas. So to identify the run of sentence, first we have to know where the first idea ends and where the second one begins. This next chapter, has a lot of difficult information in it. There should be a pause here. This is one idea. Then we start another idea. You should start studying right away. How do we fix this mistake? Use the right punctuation mark to divide ideas. Using a semicolon or a period may work here. And here you have the example. This next chapter has a lot of difficult information in it. You should start reading it right away. Why did I choose a semicolon? Because for me, it's better to use a semicolon because I'm talking about the chapter and how difficult the chapter is. So because it is challenging, I'm giving you a strong advice. You should start writing, I'm sorry, you should start studying right away. Now, the second one, it could be when two independent clauses are connected by a transitional expression, like a conjunctive adverb, such as, however, moreover, nevertheless. And then when we use these ones, we tend to do the following. Mr. Nguyen has sent his four children to Ivy League colleges. However, he has sacrificed his health working day and night in that dusty bakery. As you can see here, you have two ideas, but you have no division between them. And even though you have a comma after however, you here didn't divide the two ideas properly. So how can we separate these ideas and make them still be working? Separate ideas using a period. Use a semicolon to link them through the conjunctive adverb. You have two choices here. For example, you can say, Mr. Nguyen has sent his four children to Ivy League colleges. Sorry, there should be a, a period here or a semicolon. Semicolon or period, however, comma, he has sacrificed his house working day and night in that dusty bakery. You can either place, I'm sorry, this is my bad part of what happened. The period got deleted, I don't know why. Here, before the word however, here, after colleges, we have finished one idea here. The first idea 
starts from midstream urea and it ends and it ends in collagen. So you write a period or you place a semicolon and then you go with however, comma, so you have introduced a conjunctive adverb and then the second independent clause. And this is how you fix the run of sentence. And the third reason could be when the two of when the second of the two independent clauses contains a pronoun that connects it to the first independent clause. Like you see here in the example, this computer doesn't make sense to me. It came without a manual. Here we have an idea. This computer doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's not logical the way the computer works for me. Why? Because it came without a manual, but the why is not here. So we have just two ideas that are related, but we have not, we have neither joined them nor separated them. So how can we fix this run-on sentence? Although these two clauses are quite brief, as we see it here, and the ideas are closely related, this is a run -on sentence. Why? Because we have no period, no semicolon, no punctuation mark that announces one idea after the other one. So here we need to make a pause. Can you think of other methods to correct it? I'm suggesting one. And I say, this computer doesn't make sense to me since it came without a manual. This computer doesn't make sense to me since or because or comma for it came without a manual. Think about it. How many more correction methods can you think of in order to fix a run of sentence? Run of sentences are very similar to a comma slice. So if you saw the previous example for comma slices, you may probably figure out how to connect two ideas that are related, but that represent another error, which is the run of sentence. Think of more ways of correcting it, and we can still discuss them in class. Okay. I have already explained to you what comma slices are, what run of sentences are, but I, once again, advise you, do not forget to take notes and keep these notes, keep these reminders handy. Why? Because we have quizzes. Why? Because we have discussions. Why? Because we are learning and we always need these reminders not to forget. This video will be uploaded so you can have it anywhere, anyhow, anytime you want it. It's okay, it is for free. So you can still have the reminder watching the video, but what if you make some notes so that you can remember the words I'm saying right now? It could be very good. Thanks a lot for watching. I know that you probably had an idea already of what comma slices and random sentences were, but if you have any questions still, it's all for me. If you have more questions you want to ask me, you can find me on my institutional email, in our Schoology course, in our Google Classroom course, or on Facebook. Okay? So if you have more questions, we can discuss them in class. Wait for the next practice on common places and random sentences, and a quiz on Schoology is coming Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.